Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, Judge. Thank you. Sorry. Good morning, good Senator. Morning. <clears throat> I want to comment on the, the last exchange. And, Judge, this is not of your making, so it's really not about, about you. But Representative Green, who's a <clears throat> fine man, came up and said that he thought the exchange between you and Senator Leahy at the end about the arc of time and how far we've come as a nation was powerful. I agree. And I guess here's my point I'm trying to make to the American people, to my Democratic colleagues. I wish you had that same attitude when an African-American conservative is appointed to high office in the judiciary. So what happened with Janice Rogers Brown? In 2003, she was an African-American nominee for the D.C. District Court, uh, 54 years old, a little bit older than you, but pretty close. She was the daughter and granddaughter of sharecroppers, a childhood in Alabama under Jim Crow. She was a uh, single mother, a member of the California Supreme Court. Instead of celebrating how far we've come, my Democratic colleagues filibustered her ascension to the D.C. Circuit Court. Because it's well known on our side that we we're very much considering her to be the first African-American woman on the Supreme Court. So rather than this wonderful exchange, which was wonderful, Representative Green, where were you and others when there was a wholesale assault on her nomination? Nowhere to be found. The filibuster was used for two years to stop her nomination. And we eventually did the Gang of 14, of which I was a part, so that she could make it through after two years of waiting. This is what the current president said when he was in the Senate, Joe Biden, asking about her, Janice Rogers Brown, being on the Supreme Court. I can assure you that would be a very, very, very difficult fight, and she probably would be filibustered. That's what he said about an African-American conservative nominee by President Bush, who had served five years on the California Supreme Court. We're not going to live in America like that any longer. To my Democratic colleagues, if you're a person of color, a woman supported by liberals is pretty easy sailing. But if you're Miguel Estrada, Janice Rogers Brown, Amy Coma Barrett, on and on and on, your life gets turned upside down. You had nothing to do with that. I just make this observation that when you come up to me and talk about how moving the exchange was, I agree. And I just want to remind you there was somebody else of color, a woman of color, that was picked for the D.C. Circuit, one of the highest courts in the land, that did not meet the same fate. And those days should be over. Uh, do you believe illegal immigrants should be allowed to vote, Judge Jackson? Thank you, Senator. Under our laws, you have to be a citizen of the United States in order to vote. So the answer would be no. It's not consistent with our laws, so the answer is no. Okay, why do they do that in New York? Senator, I'm not aware of the circumstances. Okay, all right, well, that's a good answer. The answer is no. Can an unborn child feel pain at 20 weeks in the birthing process? Senator, I don't know. Are you aware of the fact that anesthesia is provided to the unborn child at that time period if there's an operation to save the baby's life because they can, in fact, feel pain? Are you I, aware of that? I am not aware of that. Well, that may come before you one day, so just keep an open mind. That's the only thing I ask you to do. You said uh, just a bit ago and that you apply the law and the facts and call them as you see them. Is that right? That is correct, Senator. Okay, and you look at the statute as the way it's written, and you try to apply it in its plain meaning. Is that correct? That is correct, Senator. Have you heard of a case called uh, Make the Road versus McAleen? Make the Road New York, yes. Yeah, okay. Make the Road in New York, who are they? Um... Make the Road New York is a nonprofit that uh, represents um, various 
individuals in the sort of immigration law right. field? They're a nonprofit advocacy group for Im immigration issues. <clears throat> Did you know they received large donations from the Arabella Network and from George Source's Open Society Foundation Network? No. Okay. Well, they did. Uh, now, in that case, what was the issue? The issue in that case was a challenge to a change in administration policy concerning um, expedited removal, which is a uh, policy that Congress enacted mm -hmm. in order to um, expedite certain removals in the immigration system. Ordinarily, um, before expedited removal. Asylum cases do not fall in this category, right? Well. Trust me on that, because the statute says it doesn't. If a person who could otherwise be subject to expedited removal makes and has a credible fear of torture in their mm -hmm. country, they can be and can they make that determined, claim? they right. can be determined right. uh, to qualify for regular removal yeah. rather than right. expedited removal. So expedited removal is a creature of Congress, folks. And if you've been here two years or less, the statute, the, the, the statute, I'm sorry, the statute. The statute would allow the administration and office to have expedited removal, avoiding a lot of the, the hurdles that would exist otherwise for people here two years or less. So in the Obama, uh, even Bush years, they did not look at it in terms of applying it to everybody. Some people coming by air got expedited removal, others didn't. The Trump administration decided to use the authority given to it by Congress to remove all eligible cases two years or less under the expedited removal statute. Is that a fair summary? Well, Senator, I would um, say, say it differently. Well, say it differently. All right. Um, the statute that you put up indicates that Congress is giving the department, it, it says the attorney general, but now it's the department, right, right. the ability to determine what category of aliens. If you have two years or less. Yeah, but, but, but importantly, um, the authority was, it, it was not Congress saying two years or less. What Congress said is you agency have the authority to determine what category of persons between who, who have been here between zero and 24 months. Which is two be. years. Yeah. No, but what, <laughs> forgive so, me, Senator. I'm just, what I'm trying to explain is that the authority given to the agency was to determine what length they of had time. discretion to make that. What, what length of time. It was not the authority to deport everyone who's been here for 24 months. It was the authority to determine what length of time a person has to be here in order to be subjected to expedited removal. Here's what the statute said. The attorney general, which is actually the DHS secretary, may apply clauses one and two of this subparagraph to any and all aliens described in subclass two as designated by the Attorney General, actually DHS, such designation shall be in the sole and unrevealable discretion of the Attorney General and may be modified at any time. Now, I've been in this business for quite a while. What the Trump administration did was to use the discretion given to it by statute in a way different than prior administrations. This advocacy group, the Arabella supported advocacy group, tried to strike it down. You rule for them. Here's what the DC Circuit Court said about your ruling. There could hardly be a more definitive expression 
of congressional intent to lead the decision about the scope of expanded removal within statutory bounds to the Secretary's independent judge, judgment. The forceful phrase, sole and unreviewable discretion, by its exceptional terms. Such designation shall be in the sole and unreviewable discretion of the Attorney General and may be modified at any time. To those of us in the law writing business, I don't know how you could tell a judge more clearly that the administration, the agency in question, has discretion to do certain things within the statute. So this is an example to me, and you may not agree, where the plain language of the statute was completely wiped out by you. You reached a conclusion because you disagreed with the Trump administration, and the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals said, as I've quoted just a minute ago, there could hardly be a more definitive expression of congressional intent to lead the decision about the scope of expedited removal within the statutory bounds to the Secretary's independent judgment. That, to me, is Exhibit A of activism. Let's go back to the child pornography cases. Senator, would you allow me to? Yes, please. Thank you. The statute and the circumstances that you reference are accurate insofar as that is what the statute says. It's not all of it. It doesn't describe the designation process that I was trying to articulate. And uh, it doesn't address the fact that Congress has another statute that is presumptively applied in agency cases to tell agencies how to exercise discretion. There's also DC Circuit case law that says that in addition to having that procedural statute be presumptive, even very clear uh, designations of authority to an agency may still be subject to Congress's Judge, other directions regarding mm, Judge, how to exercise right. the discretion. That argument so, fell on deaf ears. Understood. That's, well, but, that's well, wait, our appellate wait, 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 process. I've got other things I want to talk about. You've given an explanation, but it didn't work. The D.C. Circuit of Court said there could hardly be a more definitive expression of congressional intent. This is good as it gets. There's no way to write a statute saying discretion lies in an agency. It's sole. It's non-reviewable. So you're not convincing me that With this respect, was anything Senator. other than act activism, and we can talk about it all day long, but I, DC, I agree with the D.C. court. This, to me, is an example, Exhibit A, of a judge ignoring limitations placed in the law by Congress to get a result they wanted. Child pornography. Uh, I have no doubt that you find child pornography disgusting as the rest of America. You're a mother. You seem to be a very nice person. Are you aware of how many images are out there on the internet involving children in sexually compromising situations? Senator, I'm not aware of the numbers, but I've seen the images that, in and my there are disgusting, role right? Well, let me tell you the numbers. In 2021, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children cyber tip line received 29.3 million reports of apparent child sexual exploitation containing 85 million images, videos, and other files. That's in 2021. It's up. In 2019, it was less. So there's an epidemic of this on the internet, that if you go out on the internet, there are millions of pictures of kids being abused. When it comes to sentencing child pornography possession cases, do you routine, routinely discount the fact that a computer was used? Thank you, Senator, for allowing me to address um, this concern. The guidelines related to child pornography mm -hmm. were drafted at a time in which a computer was not used for the majority, if not almost all, of these kinds of horrible crimes. The guidelines have enhancements in them. In two areas that you said you disagree, what are those two areas? 
at the time that the guidelines were drafted, it was a, an aggravating factor, a substantial aggravating factor to use a computer in order to distribute and disseminate the images because the ordinary crime was not committed by computer. So the Would you baseline now agree with me that computers are sort of the venue of choice for child pornographer people? Yes, Senator. Okay, so here's my point. If you believe, as I do, the computer has uh, created a bigger demand, there are more photos out there because of the internet, more websites uh, exposing this garbage, wouldn't you want to deter people from going down that road? Senator, this crime is among the most difficult. No, answer most... my question. Wouldn't you want to deter people from going down the road of using the computer that allows these people to have access to millions of photos because of the technology? I want those people deterred. Senator... So if you're listening to my voice today and you're on a computer looking at child pornography and you get caught, I hope you're in, your sentence is enhanced because the, the computer and the Internet is feeding the beast here, that all these images out there are going to be more over time because people use computers. Now, didn't you also say that the number of images should not be considered as a sentence enhancement? Senator, with respect to the computer, one of the most effective deterrents is one that I imposed in every case and that judges across the country impose in every case, which is substantial substantial supervision. Any of these wait, wait, defendants... Wait a minute, Judge. You think it is a bigger deterrent to take somebody who's on a computer looking at sexual images of children in the most disgusting way is to supervise their computer habits versus putting them in jail? No, Senator, I didn't say versus... Well, that's exactly what you said. I think the best way to deter people from getting on a computer and viewing thousands and hundreds and over time maybe millions the population as a whole of children being exploited and abused every time somebody clicks on is to put their ass in jail not supervise their computer usage senator i wasn't talking about um verses you just said you thought it was a deterrent to supervise them i don't think it's a deterrent i think the deterrent is putting them in jail senator, the sentencing have respond? a deterrent component Senator, would you let her respond? Yes. Does sentencing have a deterrent component? Yes, Senator. Deterrence is one of the purposes of punishment, and uh, Congress has directed courts to consider various means of achieving deterrence. One of them, as you said, is incarceration. Another, as I tried to mention, was substantial periods of supervision once the person... So if I could, May, ask you, in your view, it's more of a deterrent to have somebody substantially supervised in terms of their computer use who's looking at child pornography than it is to put them in jail? Senator, I'm not saying it's more or That's less. That's exactly what you're saying. What, what, I'd, what I'd like to point out is that if we're going to... If... Let me say it this way. Congress has authorized courts to use a number of different means to achieve the purposes of punishment. And one of and them the, is an enhanced punishment by using a computer. The enhancement with respect to using a computer relates to the penalty in terms of Incarceration. And you would choose not to apply that in these cases. You've said that. I'll read you the quote. But you've decided not to apply the use of a computer as an enhancement. You've also said you're not going to hold the number of images that the person has looked at as a sentencing enhancement factor. Is that true? No, Senator. It's not the number of images that the person has looked at because we don't have that information. Well, it is, it is the, the number of images that they've either received or distributed well, that are... Whether you don't know, we don't know if they looked at them, but you're not going to hold it against them that they received 10,000 images versus 100. That's not what I've said, Senator. Well, here's what you said. I've decided 
to apply my general policy disagreement with respect to those enhancements, at least that is the computers and the number of images. Folks, what she is saying, the reason she's always below the recommendation, I think, uh, is because she doesn't use the enhancements available to her. She takes them off the table. And I think that's a big mistake, Judge. I think that every federal judge out there should make it harder for somebody to go on a computer and view this filth, that if you use that venue, which is the venue of choice for all these child pornography cases, that you use it against them. I think the more you download like drugs, the more you have, the more you should go to jail. You've made a conscious decision to disregard those two enhancement sentencing factors, and I think that is a wrong way to go in terms of deterrent. To me, putting somebody in jail for using a computer is more of a deterrent to, than supervising their activity of watching the computer. That's just a difference that we have. I know I'm out of time, and uh, listen, I, you've lived an incredible life, but here's one thing that won't happen to you as we wrap this up. How would you feel that if I'd had a letter from somebody accusing you of something, a crime or misconduct, for weeks, and I give it to Senator Durbin just before this hearing's over, and not allow you to comment on the accusation. How would you feel about that? Senator, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't understand the context of the question. Well, let me, did you watch the Kavanaugh hearings? No, sir. Are you familiar with what happened in the Kavanaugh hearings? Sen Generally. <clears throat> Senator, your time is. Well, please, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so to be honest, it's a minute and 47 seconds. She filibustered every question I had, and she has a right to give an answer, but I'm trying to make a point in 20 minutes. You were here for Kavanaugh. If she's confused about what happened, some people on the other side had an accusation against Judge Kavanaugh that during high school, uh, he sexually assaulted somebody. And the rest is history. That was known to the people on the other side and never revealed during the meetings they had with Judge Kavanaugh. It was literally ambushed. He was ambushed. How would you feel if we did that to you? Senator, I've appreciated the kindness that each of you has shown me to see me in your offices, to talk with me about but, my approach. But, but my question is, what if it, during our 15-minute exchange, it was very pleasant. You're a very nice person. You have a lot to be proud of. I would never do that to you. If I had some information that's sketchy at best, that somehow you've done something wrong, I promise you, just from human decency, I would share it with you. I would not disclose it at the last minute of the last day of the hearing, and I've already given it to a newspaper so the whole country can read about it before you ever said a word. Senator, she's had nothing to do with the cause. No, but Kevin I'm Ohio. asking her you about won't, you won't even how, her how she response. may feel about what y'all uh, did. We have Senator, order your time has expired, and I'm going to give her an opportunity to finally complete an answer. So, can, if I could just address, answer the question. It, 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 Senator, I don't have any comment on what procedures took place in this body regarding What would you think Justice about the Kavanaugh here? Kavanaugh. What I'd like to answer is your points about my sentencing in child pornography cases. The point of the guidelines is to assist judges in determining what punishment to provide in cases. And they are horrible cases, but the idea is that between the range of punishment that Congress has prescribed, judges are supposed to be providing proportional punishment based on what a person has done. The, the, the sentencing scheme doesn't place everybody at the same level. The, the point of judging and the guidelines is to look at what has happened in a case, compare defendants to each other in terms of what they've done, and give proportional pen penalties based- Mr. Chairman, this is non- she, she has said, Mr. Chairman, she does not use sentence enhancements in the area of somebody using a computer for everybody. Can, can I explain why, sir? I'm, I'm going to give her, the witness an opportunity to respond to you, Senator. Finally. At why? the time that the guidelines were created for child pornography, 
this crime was primarily being committed by people who were literally mailing one, two, five, ten, a hundred photos at a time. How's it being committed Could, now? Let, would she please Go have ahead. her complete her answer? Go ahead. As a result, the commission determined in the guidelines that it was a substantial aggravating factor if the facts of the case demonstrated that someone had been distributing hundreds of images. Because what that meant was over this long, maybe it was a long period of time, they had collected one photo at a time, they had amassed it, they had potentially mailed one at a time, and that showed really aggravated, terrible conduct. I'm not saying as a baseline it's not terrible, it's all terrible. But what we're doing is we're differentiating among defendants. So in a world in which the mail is used for the purpose of distribution, it really matters whether the person has distributed one or five or a thousand. And so the guideline says, you know what? We are going to treat a person who's distributed a thousand a lot worse because that shows that this person is really engaged in this really horrible behavior. In comes the internet. On the internet, with one click, you can receive, you can distribute tens of thousands. You can be doing this for 15 minutes, and all of a sudden, you are looking at 30, 40, 50 years in prison. Good. Cut. Good. I understand, Absolutely Senator, good. I hope you are. To do good. Allow her to finish, please. I hope you go to jail for 50 years if you're on the internet trolling for images please. of children and sexual exploitation. So, so you don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a that horrible thing. That's not what the witness said, and she should be allowed to answer this question once and for all. Senator. Senator, all I'm trying to explain is that our sentencing system, the, the system that Congress has created, the system that the Sentencing Commission is the steward of is a rational one. It's a system that is designed to help judges do justice in these terrible circumstances by eliminating unwarranted disparities, by ensuring that the most serious defendants get the longest periods of time. And when modes of commission of the crime change such that in two seconds, someone can receive or distribute thousands of images. That's no longer a, and this is what the commission found in their studies, an indicator of a person who, relative to other people, has committed this crime in a more aggravated way. Well, and so what we're trying to do is be rational in our dealing with some of the most horrible kinds of behavior. This is what our justice system is about. It's about judges making determinations in meting out penalties to people who have done terrible things. It is not rational to take the venue of choice of child pornographers, the computer that have 85 million images on it and not consider that feeding the beast. We're trying to get people to stop this crap. So when you troll on the internet and you pull down thousands of images of children from the internet, I want you to stop that. I want people to go to jail who do that because you're feeding the beast. We have a bill here, the Earn It Act, that would allow the victims who are on the internet over and over again to sue the, the media companies that provide these images. We have a fundamental dif differences of how you deter crime. I think the best way you deter crime when it comes to child pornography is you lure the bloom on anybody who goes onto the internet and pulls out these images for their pleasure. Senator, every person in all of these uh, charts and documents I sent to jail because I know how serious this crime is. Every person I discussed the harm of these terrible, terrible images to the victims who are portrayed in them. I talked about what this crime does 
to the children who are being abused in these photos and on the other side of their terms of imprisonment, I ensured that they were facing lengthy periods of supervision and restrictions on their computer use so they could not do this sort of thing again. That's what Congress has required of judges, and that's what I did in every case. Uh, you always were under the recommendation of the prosecutor, many times the parole people. And to be honest with you, Judge, a uh, 32-year-old man who sent an image of his own 10-year-old daughter, uh, you substantially reduced the guide, uh, not only the guidelines, but the recommendation. And all I can say is that your view of how to deter child pornography is not my view. I think you're doing it wrong, and every judge who does what you're doing is making it easier for the children to be exploited. If you're on a computer right now looking at a kid in a sexually compromising situation and you get caught, I hope nobody gives you a break because you use the computer. The conduct that's been described is reprehensible, and I think everyone in this room agrees. And the fact of the matter is that I'm co-sponsor of your bill, the Earned Act, and I believe that we should be doing our job here. But part of our job, we have failed in responding to the changing circumstances that face this crime. What has it been, 15 or 16 years? She is currently not an outlier in sentencing. 70% of the federal judges face the same dilemma and wonder why Congress has failed to act and when it will act. This is our fault? Part of, partially it is, Senator. To be honest with you, it is. We have to upgrade these guidelines and decide whether we're going to stick with the Supreme Court decision that they're not mandatory.